What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we're gonna check out breaking mass WWE firings for 2022. Real reason behind them on the WrestleMania channel. Uh, there's been some more releases now, um, and I'm not sure what's going on. We're starting off the year with WWE releasing more talent. We're gonna see what's going on, why you know the talent is being released. Hopefully, it's not for budget cut reasons, but you know that's just a typical answer that WWE management gives. So, we're gonna see what's going on here. Hopefully, this is not a, a bad sign of things to come within WWE. But let's get right into it. Yeah, here this. back with some more news. Now, there's more releases to report in the WWE. <clears throat> so, let's not waste any time as we look at the first releases of 2022, why the WWE made the cuts, and what's next for these individuals. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Now, let's look at these mass firings. Now, a number of news sites including Fightful Select, PW Insider and Wrestling News broke the news of the recent releases, including a beloved and long-tenured figure, William Regal. Wow. And undoubtedly, it's the most shocking release as William Damn. Regal has been with the company since 1998 and who transitioned from an in-ring performer to wow. a trusted figure backstage. He worked as a talent scout for the WWE before it launched NXT. As NXT fans know, Regal played a key role in NXT's formation mm -hmm. as an authority figure and helping wrestlers backstage. It didn't take long for some of Regal's students turned superstars to comment on how much he meant to them, including Damn. Johnny Gargano who tweeted, If it wasn't for William Regal, a lot of your favorite guys wouldn't be on television. Mm -hmm. There are so many of us indie guys in opportunity. He will never take credit for that, but he deserves his flowers for helping and molding this generation of wrestlers. Damn. Hashtag thank you Regal. Former NXT Women's Champion Raquel Gonzalez tweeted, The people who believed in me, who helped me see a light when it was all going dark, who shared their wisdom and gave me opportunity, who always felt like family. I love y'all, we will always be family. That sucks, man. James Drake of the NXT team Grizzle Young Veterans tweeted about Regal's impact on NXT UK. William Regal is the man responsible for the inception of NXT UK. Throughout 2016, he traveled around the UK independent scene to find the 16 participants for the WWE UK tournament. I will never forget him phoning me up with an offer to leave the 9 to 5 life behind me. Wow. At the time, I didn't have a big UK independent name. I was working shows around Morecambe and the holiday <clears throat> camps, but without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. There would be no FS Wrestling UK or this version of GYV. He lives and breathes this job. Thank you. As real life friendship with Triple H is well known, but as fans have seen, friendship and tenure seems to mean nothing when mm -hmm. it comes to being released. Another name of Triple H. Damn, man, that's that's uh, that sucks, man. William Regal, his on-screen presence was probably some of the best manager presence we've had in WWE, in my opinion, because they didn't make it about themselves that's that's the one thing we've seen on the main roster so many times whoever was a manager or the gm for that brand a lot of times they would make it about themselves instead of making it about the wrestlers you know what i'm saying and in this situation with nxt it was a breath of fresh air to not see william regal insert himself in a match or making it about himself he always made it about the wrestlers and making sure the booking is done you know like the matches happen there's no chaos as a gm should and i like that and i of course i know you know he we all know what he was doing behind the scenes of really helping talent and you know really scouting talent so it just sucks they they released him man that's that's kind of messed up H's buddies is the road dog who's also been released. That's crazy WWE too. WWE Hall of Famer Brian James is well known to the WWE fans for his run during the Attitude Era as one half of the New Age Outlaws and for his time in Degeneration X. But like several wrestlers from that era, James went to work backstage as a producer. More recently, he held backstage in NXT with Wrestling News' Paul Davis describing James' work as a role backstage at NXT and at the Performance Center where he helped teach promo and character development classes. The third release is Scott Armstrong. Hey. Scott Armstrong, who is actually Brian James' brother, has worked in the WWE since 2006 other than a one-year absence as a referee and a producer. Although he was furloughed in 2020, the WWE brought him back to the company. but. They didn't need him for long. 
Number four, yeah. Ace Steel, aka Chris Guy. Ace Steel is a former wrestler who many fans know as the man who trained CM Punk. Steel was working in the WWE's Performance Center as a coach and producer. Mm. Like Scott Armstrong, Steel was furloughed in 2020 but returned to the company. The fifth is Ryan Katz. Ryan Katz worked as NXT's creative producer, who Mike Johnson of PW Insider described as being eccentrically involved in a lot of creative character development and vignettes. Oh boy, man. Oh man, NXT is taking some hits, man. Even on the production side of things and management side of things, they're taking some real hits. So, whoo, man, I, I <laughs> ah, man, this sucks. <laughs> this really does. It's, 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 it's always a, a bad time to see people get released. You know what I'm saying? Especially if they're good at the job. We don't know the details. We haven't gotten to that part of the video why they were released, but I'm just hoping it's not the cliche budget cuts because that's BS. Katz, who has worked on MTV's short-lived Wrestling Society X, remember that, was with the WWE since 2015. The next one is Dave Kapoor. That's Dave Kapoor, if you might remember, managed the great Kali as Ranjan Singh, who was actually oh, still working with WWE, didn't know that. was working in NXT of late. Kapoor had previously worked behind the scenes as a senior vice president of creative. Sean Ross Sapp actually added that one of the names that actually surprised people the most within the company was actually Kapoor. Kapoor has actually been with the WWE for 15 years. Wow. People who have worked next to him have heavily praised him for his work in the company. The seventh is George Carroll. As the Wrestling Observer Brian Rose reports that Carroll joined NXT in 2021 as a producer and a writer. Number eight, Kathy Carino. Kathy Carino, who worked in the ring as Allison Danger, has only recently been hired by WWE, working as a coach at WWE's Performance Center. There have also been a lot of NXT wrestlers that have also been released. Mm with Timothy Thatcher, Danny Burch, and Hideki Suzuki becoming the first wrestlers to be future endeavored in the new year. And lastly, future Sarah endeavored. Cummings. Damn. In addition to the NXT related releases, it's the WWE a also released You've an been executive. Featured endeavored. PW wow. Insider's Mike Johnson reports, Sarah Cummings, who's held the post of Senior Vice President Consumer Products at WWE, was released today by the company. Cummings had been with the company since December 2018 and had worked for New York Roadrunners Club for over nine years prior to shifting over to WWE. So those are the releases, but what's behind the latest crop of them? Well, let's look at their apparent motivation. Other than Cummins, there's a notable pattern to the WWE's releases and you don't have to be the world's greatest detective to figure things out. The releases are undoubtedly the company's latest efforts to remove any vestiges of previous incarnation of NXT. Wow. Fans need look no further than the WWE's own acknowledgement of what drove the releases. Wrestling News' Paul Davis is reporting that the WWE issued the following statement regarding the cut. With the continued evolution of NXT 2.0, we've decided to part ways with some of their staff based in our performance center. We thank them for their many contributions throughout the years and wish them the best. The cuts of 2021 show that there's no such thing as job security for either wrestlers or backstage it's officials. Not. And it's also clear that it's full speed ahead again in terms of Vince McMahon's vision for an all new NXT. Is this the wrath of Khan? Well, that's not all, however, as these cuts are evidence of Nick Khan's dominance backstage. The WWE has released a number of executives since Khan became WWE president, some of them with significant time in the company. You may recall that WWE released Senior Vice President Creative Services Stan Stansky last November. The Stansky, who has been with the WWE for almost 15 years, was one of several company workers who got the axe, but it came as an eye-opener as the WWE's willingness to let anyone go. Like many aspects of the WWE, it's difficult to confirm the exact motivations for the executives' releases, as they often rely on the time-trusted budget cuts explanation, mm -hmm. but several wrestling pundits have speculated that these executives do not fit into Nick Khan's grand scheme of things. So is this a new future? Well, we discuss what seems to be Vince McMahon's desire to take the WWE to the next level. While fans and critics can point out the company's creative problems, there's no denying that Nick Khan has helped take the WWE's business to new heights. It appears that Vince McMahon is giving Khan considerable leeway in reshaping the WWE's corporate structure, and as long as they continue to thrive, it's unlikely McMahon will get in the way of these changes. Regardless of whether Vince McMahon is making these changes to sell the WWE and get the best possible price, or whether he's looking to continue the WWE's dominance in the wrestling world, Vince McMahon isn't satisfied with the WWE's current status. Now, this is nothing new as McMahon has always wanted to take the WWE from promoting wrestling to promoting a complete brand of entertainment. 
The difference here is that McMahon has an ally who seems capable of transforming Vince's dreams into a reality. Mm. And with that in mind, is it any wonder McMahon has allowed Khan to do so much? But what is NXT? Have hmm. the days of the black and gold brand gone as Vince uh, McMahon has ditched the majority of NXT's original structure, I think they both are, man. backstage figures and wrestlers, and he's infused it with what he sees as new blood, both literally and figuratively? However, what about the many wrestlers and backstage figures who will soon be free agents? Ring of Honor could benefit from all of these releases if the promotion returns from its current sabbatical, as Ring of Honor seems to be looking at revamping its products and it could be using new trainers, producers and talent to take the place of the wrestlers who have gone on to other projects and promotions following their release. AEW doesn't need any additional wrestlers, know. fans have repeatedly pointed out that hasn't stopped Tony Khan from signing new stars, but it might benefit from some- They don't really, if you want to be honest, AEW, they're kind of stacked. They don't really need any more wrestlers because they already have a stacked roster as it is, but I'm sure some will go to AEW. Some of the trainers and coaches who will be available soon. While AEW's policy for training wrestlers appears to be on-the-job training in matches on Dark, Elevation, and similar shows, there have been calls for the company to consider building its own training facility. Much like the WWE Performance Center, although the WWE likely doesn't care that it's practically handled a training center infrastructure to AEW, Tony Khan should consider this golden opportunity. Mm -hmm. AEW might not want to build a performance center per se, but if it does, there's never been a better time to hire coaches and producers with experience. Yep. Now, we'll continue following this developing story and keep you updated on the latest releases and any new information on the reasons behind them. What do you guys think of these maps? That's... It's one of those things where it's like, it's, I, we, we really don't know. <laughs> we really don't know why upper management is deciding to let go of all these individuals and then starting off the year with a bang, clearly. It's like every month or every other month, a group of wrestlers and talent get released. Now, here's the thing, kind of what WrestleMania was saying here, I think it would be wise to maybe hire some of these coaches, hire some of these producers, and maybe help the overall show, maybe do get a performance like training center for people who are trying to get into AEW or new wrestlers that they're scouting, you know, to potentially build up in the company. Cause at the end of the day, you want your company to have some longevity. You want to create opportunities. So 10, 15 years down the line, AEW is still thriving and probably doing better. That's the whole goal. Um, and as it stands with WWE, I don't really know. I, I have no idea what's really going on in the future for wwe because at the end of the day they keep releasing people they keep releasing talented people or people wanting to walk out hell it wasn't like maybe last week tony storm was like yo i'm out of here like just talented people that deserve opportunities are getting let go so i don't know man comment down below let me know your thoughts and opinions on this this is just one of those things where it's like i don't know if wwe is you know really thinking this is going to help rebrand them and freshen up things that's going on you know within the company or do they feel like you know saying letting these people go is is the best for them and rolling with the people they have is, is going to work for them I, don't, I really don't know honestly at this point i'm i'm just kind of kind of confused so comment down below let me know uh what you guys think about this whole recent um releases of uh wrestlers and uh backstage uh talent and producers and stuff like that but i appreciate all love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace